Hi, we're back again at the Arthritis Broadcast Network. My name is Kelly English, and I'm from the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board to Arthritis Research Canada. And we are here today with uh, Marie Respi, who's a physiotherapist at Mary Pack Treatment Centre and quality of rehabilitation care after total joint surgery, snapshot of knee, hip and knee replacement rehabilitation care across Canada. I always have to get that all out of my mouth at once. <laughs> there we go. So um, what I'd really like to know, Marie, is how did you get into rheumatology physio? Was, it, was there a specific reason? Um, it was my last placement. So I've been at the Mary Pack Arthritis Center for 32 years, and it was my last placement as a student at UBC. And I, I was just mentioning to some other people earlier that I thought I was going to work with kids with disabilities. And in my last placement, I was so engaged in the clients, the patients that I worked with, the team that was put together, especially it was a multidisciplinary team, and I had never been exposed to that in any other placements, really. Um, and I fell in love with the field and the people and the challenges I thought it would present as a career. It really is an amazing treatment mm -hmm. center. I wish we could mm -hmm. have one in every corner of mm -hmm. every province. I can agree with that. So um, how are you involved mostly with rheumatology? Are you with them? pediatric area or have you got a specialty now? Um, I, I do. So I work um, half time at the Mary Pack Center um, as, a, as a physical therapy teaching supervisor. So it, in, that involves working with adults um, with all forms of arthritis um, and some teaching of continuing education, some teaching at UBC as well as patient education, which I have to say is my favorite, um, and some evaluation quality improvement. So a nice variety um, in that my job involves. And But my specialty for the last probably 10 plus years since I went back to school late in life um, to do a PhD has really been around osteoarthritis and total joint replacement rehab. That's Which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very popular in Canada. So there's yes. over 130,000 Canadians each year have a total hip or knee replacement and mostly that's for arthritis. So given that, um, what do you find people, do you ever ask them what's most useful? Uh, their pre-education in terms of their preparing for preparing and going for. through. Yeah, we've, there's a lot of research and I've been um, fortunate to be involved. That was one of my first projects actually, was um, looking at what prehab or preparation for um, hip and knee replacement could look like. What did patients want? Um, I did some focus groups early on in my PhD uh, across Canada, different places across Canada to find out what people's needs were, what were gaps in preparing for and what they wish they had a better understanding of going through it. Um, and then, um, more recently, my work has shifted to what will help them in their rehab experience afterwards in that in sort of first three months or so after they've had their surgery. And which do you find people have the toughest time with, the knee or the hip, or is it about the same? Um, you know, I think for people who've had both surgeries, a hip and a knee replacement, almost all of them will say the knee replacement was more painful. Mm -hmm. um, and the rehab is usually a little more aggressive, more regular, um, it's more critical, it starts right away. Um, and people with hip replacements seem to have a bit better pain control, and not just from the medications, but just the surgery, the insult on the joint um, isn't as, as, as challenging after hip replacement. Um, but they both um, uh, some recent research we did where we looked at people at the time of discharge from rehab, so about just under three months after their surgery, they reported about the same amount of pain after hip replacement and a knee replacement. About well, three, really yeah, which it was surprising because I would have assumed people at about 12 weeks after knee replacement still had significant pain. That's my experience clinically. Right. But they were both about three out of 10 for hip and knee replacement. So we may be underestimating how much, much, how how much pain a hip would be. So I, I think maybe we're making that assumption people who have a hip replacement don't have significant pain. We don't need to focus on that that much. Um, so, but I think it's, it tells us, you know, it's, it's very similar um, at that stage in the recovery. And maybe that just says that the hip doesn't take as long, but the knee catches up quicker within that yes. time. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know that at one point there were hip and I'm from Richmond, BC, they had classes for pre and post uh, water exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, when would a person be able to start things like that? And is that pre necessary exercising? Um, 
So yes, yes, and about <laughs> so prehab any um, exercise and that, and the indicators, the quality indicators that my research is based on, sort of minimum standard or recommendations for care before and after surgery, suggest that you should start any type of prehab exercise, whether it be on land or in a pool, at least eight weeks before your surgery, yeah. to allow time for a training effect, and whether you actually get stronger during that time when you're in such pain or if you can just maintain or you learn how to exercise um, learn some of the terminology in that but you need at least eight weeks to sort of reap the benefit from that um, those programs still exist they're really scattered in BC they are scattered so Richmond has that's the JR2 program and mm -hmm. people can attend that before and after surgery it has a pool component and a group exercise component um, north the North Shore of um, of um, the Lower Mainland has some nice programs they're mostly geared towards post-operative care. Um, I was looking sort of across Canada yeah and there do, there do seem to be some programs out of the community centers it, which, which is the ideal location for them that's what I'd really like to see is more programs based probably informed by physiotherapists so have that therapeutic sort of underpinnings and guidance but then run in a rec center where people are hopefully going to go back to to exercise get the social support the community support and are exercising in a community setting rather than making all of that in a therapeutic or a hospital setting okay. and what should a patient look for is is there something in, in a, particular in a program? for a program like should it be physiotherapy led or can it be athletic trainer with a bit of extra training yeah so I think it's that extra training even some physiotherapists don't have a lot of experience or confidence working with people with hip and knee replacement you need to see several people and, and publicly do some extra training in it so whether it's physiotherapy led because they have a lot of experience with people with right. hip and knee replacement or a kinesiologist or th athletic trainer um, the one we're piloting in Vancouver called active joints at one rec center it is designed by physiotherapists but it's being run by personal trainers one who's a kinesiologist um, and we maintain that close communication so if any questions come up they can call us and go you know I'm concerned about this patient or this exercise um, so looking for someone with that experience and I'd like to suggest since, since I'm a researcher that, says, that it's also a program where they're monitoring outcomes and um, what we call adverse events or, or, or anyone increasing their pain during this program are people falling are people dropping out of your program why is that so we like to see that monitoring of the programs to make sure they're safe and to make sure they're effective so any program that has those kind of components to it both the training of the personnel as well as the evaluation and monitoring um, usually makes for a good program great okay um, and in the rural areas look at their videos online that are good you know how do you find out this stuff I always hear from the people in the rural areas who say you know we don't have a physiotherapist mm -hmm. it's a long way to it my hip replacements in Vancouver but what do I do when I come back mm -hmm. so I do physios do it online sometimes or what yeah so teller rehab which mm -hmm. is what you're speaking of um, there is growing in popularity less it hasn't taken off really in Canada yet that I'm aware of okay. a lot of the research has been done in Australia specifically with hip and knee replacement clients and it's been shown to be quite effective and that for those patients that are more rural or would prefer to have that more remote monitoring and not come into the clinic once or twice a week they're very satisfied with the experience they're getting similar outcomes in terms of um, their ability to walk day-to-day -day function pain levels range of motion as those that come into standard care um, it's a select group though who can interact of with course. the technology of and course. Are comfortable on that but um, it's looking really promising and I think it would be a really nice option to be able to offer throughout BC um, and more remote areas of Canada um, if someone can't be, um, travel in and also that if there is a therapist in that community who only sees one or two clients a year who's had a joint replacement they may be less confident providing really high quality rehabilitation so um, have that patient being able to access tele rehab for a more experienced therapist or for that therapist to be able to connect with a more experienced therapist for guidance would be really helpful um, so okay I think I've hit so much so have you learned anything new and exciting this year at CRE? 2020. This has been uh, it's been a great meeting so far. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to present um, our posters yet, right. um, but so I'm looking forward to, looking the, forward to, that to the feedback um, from my colleagues across the country. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, the presentation yesterday. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, 
I'm trying to remember his name. Just you know. <laughs> it was on the gut biome, and oh, it became okay. so popular. Um, and it's, he presented it in uh, Tim Spector. Tim Spector. Yes, and presented it in such an engaging and entertaining way to really look at our, the importance of our diet. And I think we've all, you know, been aware of it anecdotally, and the research is out there. But he just, re I really liked how he packages that together. So that was really interesting great. for me. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I look forward to several more great sessions. Good. Now, um, as you know, I, I've been diagnosed 24 years ago, but uh, the best thing I ever had was going into the model of care at the Mary Pack Treatment mm -hmm. Centre and getting not just the physio, but the OT and the, the, oh, the, uh, the uh, social work group mm -hmm. did stress management, mm -hmm. which I think everybody should be able to take. Um, given that model of care, uh, it's so very specialized within the Mary Packs, but can you see other places starting to use it? I know that they've started putting in clinics, for example, in Vancouver mm -hmm. and, and on the outskirts, but other provinces, do you see that model of care? It's really spotty across um, the country. So every um, province has their own courts, health care system and, and models of care to deliver care to different patient groups. So some um, are able to offer nice interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary programs. Uh, I won't say exactly similar to the Mary Pack program, but more of a clinic based, often, you know, OT and a PT um, working together or working di maybe with, as part of a team with a rheumatologist. Ontario has some great um, interdisciplinary programs or models of care for arthritis. We lost one of our physiotherapists. Yes, we did. Moved back <laughs> so to Ontario. Yes, yes, and she's in that model of care. Yes, she is. So, I mean, BC is a little unique in how we offer our program out of four sites, and it's all interdisciplinary with several right. of the disciplines that you mentioned. Um, I would say that's probably unique for a provincial uh, network or structure. Yes, I've not um, seen that yeah, uh, in other works. provinces, yeah. Yeah. So, last time we talked, we talked about the hip and, and joint um, toolbox. Mm -hmm. and what's happening on that? Well, We've got some new stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. <laughs> so, and you've been in, in, involved with, a, we've done some work on a couple of, of toolkits. So, the, the one that I'll be presenting um, tomorrow, I have to think for a sec, um, the posters is called the Equip Toolkit. And it's um, basically an acronym is because we like our acronyms on how to equip or uh, engage patients in their own care both before and after hip and knee replacement surgery. Um, so we have done some pilot testing of that on how to collect that data, how to recruit patients. We've um, done some patient-oriented research, so patient partners are key uh, players in that in helping us test and develop these tools. And now we're ready to actually implement the toolkit um, in some sort of trial across BC to see if it makes a uh, difference in patients' outcomes and their experiences uh, for rehab. So that's the, sort of the update on where we are. So look that. for that across Canada mm -hmm. sometime in the next two years. By the sure, time that's that's on the the <laughs> I know that it takes a long time to bring the technology yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anita, have you got any questions from anyone in the audience? Do you have any pre-surgery and post-surgery tips for people who are thinking about hip and knee surgery? Um, it's hard to offer specific tips without obviously uh, sort of knowing what they're looking for. There are some great online resources though, and I, I would say the tip is to educate yourself, um, to look for those online resources such as the Canadian Orthopedic Foundation um, has some excellent resources. Arthritis Consumer Expert has some um, nice resources and some blogs from um, Cheryl who's recently gone through the experience herself. Um, the Mary Pack Arthritis Center website also has some information on total joint replacement, how to prepare, and the OS, it's an acronym, OASIS, Osteoarthritis Service Integration System, um, has developed some videos and some pre-op and post-operative um, tools and That's resources. Handy. So there's lots of online resources that, that will also link you to other tools and resources. So it's that education um, and preparation that's key. Perfect. Need it? Thank you so much for coming. You're it's always fun. a pleasure to be able to sit down with you and talk. Great. Thank yeah. you, Kelly. It's like going for coffee. Yeah, we should do that sometimes. That's right. <laughs>